Hi guys. So today we are going to talk about something called a flammability diagram. On oil tankers, when we are carrying petroleum products, it is very essential that we make sure that we do not have the elements for a fire to take place inside the cargo tanks. Now we know fire element needs three things heat fuel and air air let's say we have a empty tank and we so it is completely fill up of air which has 20% 20.9% of oxygen then we load fuel into it or any portable product whatever we are wanting to carry so that is fuel and third is heat now sometimes what happens is in the fuel is being loaded a spark can happen because of static discharge so all three things are present inside the tank and under certain favorable circumstances a fire can take place and of course an explosion will happen now to negate that possibility so that we should not have this we cannot take away fuel because that is what we are carrying we cannot we are trying to take away static by putting bonding wire and everything third thing is fuel air we can definitely take away air from the system from the tanks by introducing something which is called inert gas we have inert gas generators we have got inert gas systems through which we put that air put that inert gas into the atmosphere which contains less than 5% of oxygen and hence we take away one element of this fire triangle instead of inert gas we sometimes also use nitrogen gas we have nitrogen generators wherein we generate we separate nitrogen from air and we supply this nitrogen to the tank so that there is no conducive atmosphere for fire to take place now this flammability diagram is very very important for the safe operation safe cargo operation on tankers uh, let's consider this diagram on this y axis we have percentage hydrocarbon in volume we have on the x axis we have percentage oxygen in volume now uh, yeah and this flammability diagram is different for different cargos so we are just assuming the flammability diagram diagram for crude oil for crude oil upper flammable limit and lower flammable limit is 10% and 1% by volume of hydrocarbon respectively okay now what this means is any mixture of hydrocarbon and oxygen below lower flammable limit the mixture is to lean to fire that means the amount of fuel the amount of hydrocarbon in that mixture is too less and it cannot fire anything above 10% of this of hydrocarbon by volume this mixture is too rich to fire that means the amount of oxygen in this mixture is too less to sustain or to start a fire anything from which is represented by point C to point D on this diagram anything between this is in the flammable range explosive range flammable region flammable mixture known by different names the point remains that if the mixture of air and hydrocarbon if it is within this range from C to D then we have a mixture which can be fired which can you know uh, through which a fire can take place. So now, let's see, let's consider this line AB, which is a certain mixture of air and hydrocarbon. Air is about 20.9% oxygen, sorry, and rest is hydrocarbon mixture. Now, as we introduce Ig, inner gas, into the system, this line will start to move on the left side. Right? As we introduce more inert gas into the system this oxygen oxygen will start going down because it will go like this right oxygen will start going down 
as we know, as we introduce more inert gas, this upper flammable limit will go down, and this lower flammable limit will come up. And there will come a point, point E, where the UFL and the LFL will meet. Now this is the minimum. If this is the minimum point at which there is sufficient oxygen for a fire to take place. Now, if we keep on introducing inert gas further than this, we will come into a region, we will come to an area where the fire cannot take place because the amount of oxygen into the, in the system is less than what is required. Uh, it is This point E is somewhere around 11% of oxygen. Now, IMO says, if we have less than 8% of oxygen, we are absolutely okay and no fire will take place, we have 3% margin, but as a general rule in the industry, we are going by 5%. So any time in our tanks, the amount of oxygen is not more than 5%. Always 5%, 5% is the industry rule. Now, so once we have the mixture less than 5%, there will, no fire will take place. Now, as we discharge a cargo at discharge port, we keep on pumping inert gas into the system. Suppose, suppose, let's suppose that we do not pump the inert gas into the system during discharging. And of course, when we discharge, if you are not pumping air, uh, inert gas, then air will get into the system. And if it is at some point, let's say F, and we introduce air into the system, the atmosphere of that tank will go like this where ultimately it will reach to 20.9% O2 but it will pass through this flammable mixture region see here to here it is passing through this flammable mixture region where the ratio of the hydrocarbons and oxygen is sufficient enough so that a fire can take place so this is hazardous area this is what we do not want so that is why when we are discharging we continue to pump more inner gas into the system and we bring this point F to H. So even if we are diluting with air now, it will follow this path which is much further, much clear of this flammable mixture region. Same thing happens when we are raiding our gas, raiding our tanks for tank entry. We have discharged the cargo, but we have certain amount of hydrocarbon into the system. We do not introduce air, we do not in straight away go for gas freeing for this region because if we go directly for air, it will pass through this flammable mixture. No. What we do is we start inerting the tank. We call it purging. We call we purge the tank with more Ig and remove this hydrocarbon, lower this hydrocarbon level. Again, we come from here until here. And then we put fresh air. So that even if when it is going down, it is well clear of this flammable mixture region. So flammability diagram tells us how to avoid this flammable mixture region. So that we do not have, we do not have any point, we do not have any time where we go through this flammable mixture region. This is the critical dilution line, this is the maximum you know, uh, dilution of air, which is just clear of this flammable region. But it is better to have, go a further down as much as you can and then introduce air into the system. One more thing, when we are measuring the uh, at tank atmosphere, below the lower flammable limit, we use an equipment called explosimeter. When we are measuring percentage hydrocarbon in volume, we are using an instrument called tank scope and for oxygen we check O2 analyzer. All these three, the working, the principle I have talked in another video. You can have a link below and uh, this is what it is, flammable mixture. So please do not get confused by how complicated it looks. There is nothing complicated about it, it is very very simple. When we go on the left of this diagram, 
we start inerting, we reduce the amount of oxygen at point E is the minimum oxygen at which our fire can sustain. If we keep, this is around 11%, IMO says 8 and we are following 5%. So we keep on inerting, keep on inerting until the oxygen level in the tank is less than 5% and then it is absolutely safe to carry petroleum products. When we are diluting with air, let's say during or when we are uh, doing this discharging or we are preparing our tanks for man entry at that point, we keep on entering Ig and then we dilute with air. Idea is to avoid this flammable region, avoid this explosive region, whatever you call it. So, okay, so this is how it is. I hope, I hope uh, it can be of some help. Yeah. Thank you.